Now, there are some overlaps. So for those of you who may be thinking, eh, linguistic anthropology, what exactly is that? It overlaps quite a bit theoretically with other subfields or sub-subfields that you may be inter or familiar with. Things like anthropology of media and visual anthropology is heavily influenced by theory from linguistic anthropology. Um, and you may think visual anthropology, isn't that about what you see? And isn't linguistic anthropology about what you say? Um, and actually, that's, that's an interesting question because what brings them all together is that we're really talking about communication um, and anthropology of communication. And that communication can take place in lots of different ways. And so one of the fundamental things from linguistic anthropology, and I'll mention this in a moment when I define language, um, is that we define language very broadly um, and so there are lots of different types of symbolic systems that we can talk about that are linguistic, even if it's not spoken. And the reality is, even if you only speak English, there are a lot of different Englishes. Okay, so we define language and linguistic anthropology rather open, right? There are lots of different types of language. Um, and I would tell a student who says, I only know one language. You know how to use that language, though, in a lot of different ways. You can probably code switch between different dialects um, and you have capacities because again, your linguistic capacity is a product of your, your brain. Um, I know people who speak 10 languages, but can they actually use those languages in 10 different ways? Can they get into the deep idiomatic understandings of those languages, right? Um, you know, sometimes you can, but it's a way of saying, look, we're all actually multilingual. The other part of this is that not all language is spoken. Um, and I'm gonna give you here a definition of language. A language is any symbolic system for which we can develop a literacy. And then you might say, huh? And then what's a literacy? And a literacy I can say is any symbolic system for which we can develop a good understanding. Um, and then you might say, huh? Now I'm not gonna go through all of the old discussions of signs and the three types of signs, but this actually comes from semiotics. Um, there are three major types of signs, the icon, the index, and the symbol. Not gonna confuse anybody with that. But the key here is that the icon and the symbol are different. An icon is like a picture of a guitar on a sign. Anybody can look at that and they see a picture of a guitar. It's an icon for a guitar. You don't have to speak English. Um, you know that that represents a guitar. It's an icon. In language, we call this onomatopoeia. So any language that stands for exactly what it represents, boom, bang, you know, roof. <laughs> okay. Um, now, at the same time, most language, however, is symbolic. And what that means is that symbolic is not iconic. Symbolic means the meaning of the word or the sound or the symbol is arbitrary. You have to learn it. Um, this is not something we're born with. So there are some iconic things that all humans can understand. Um, but at the same time, we need to learn language. It is symbolic. And that's why the big important thing with all of this is language, right, is not iconic. Language is symbolic. It is learned like culture. It's something that we have to learn. It is knowledge that we learn that we then use to interpret others' behavior and to shape our own behavior. All right. And similarly, right, when we learn language, we're learning these symbolic systems. However, there are lots of symbolic systems. In other words, there are lots of languages besides just the stuff that comes out of our mouth. Um, and sign language is something that you can study in great detail as a linguistic anthropologist, because sign language, despite past research saying that sign language is some kind of degenerate language, it's only iconic, it's pantomimes, right? Sign language is not just pantomimes. It's heavily symbolic. You have to learn it. There are many different sign languages Okay, because the symbolics are all very different and they you know, were developed over time in different places. And so as a result, okay, language is, is, is symbolic. What this means is language is not really mouth stuff, it's brain stuff. Humans can be born without the ability to hear, which isn't all that uncommon. And yet, because language is a product of our brains, we can still come up with other symbolic systems to develop our brains and to come up with these amazing ways of communicating, all right, which are learned, um, and yet they're things that we're born with. So it's really kind of exciting. 